Welcome back. Well, uh, light on uh, the 51st anniversary of the October War victory and the spirit uh, we take and the lessons we learned from October War and uh, the loyal youth of uh, Egypt to their homeland. We have with us uh, our uh, dear guest, uh, Nagwa Shinawi, lawyer and member of the presidential uh, uh, program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? Uh, okay. Um, uh, now, give us an idea. How you, uh, now, uh, with the spirit of uh, October, uh, from what you have uh, learned at uh, school and in Egypt, uh, and of the family and the media sources uh, are uh, telling the youth about the victory and of uh, the uh, October War. I was raised in very patriotic time. So for us, uh, October festivals were very important. Every year, my parents sit down and they sit the whole the the, the and tell them this. Yes, yes. So Egypt did, and they tried to instill patriotic values in us since we were children. And that because not a lot of parents nowadays, even though it's quite important. Yes. Yes. Uh, what are the lessons uh, that we should uh, learn from uh, the victory of the October uh, war as uh, the uh, armed forces have sacrificed their life, uh, their blood for uh, their homeland and also uh, the families who were uh, encouraging our uh, soldiers? I'm sorry, will you please repeat? Yes. Nagwa, okay, I'm going to repeat uh, the question uh, for you. Um, uh, what are the lessons we should uh, learn from uh, the victory okay. of October and the uh, courage that uh, uh, was uh, inside uh, the Egyptian people and the sacrifices we have witnessed from uh, our armed forces uh, and soldiers uh, 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 sacrificing their lives and their blood for the sake of Egypt and their homeland? Uh, multiple lessons. Courage. No one believed that Egypt could have done what it did. There were articles and books written how Egypt would terribly fail if we did it. Innovation, they used the simplest method possible to achieve what they want. Gut. Yes. Uh, determination. Yes. You, do re you do know that crossing the channel is very a very delicate matter because yes. the current changes almost every four hours so if they time they set by even five minutes the current would have changed yes. and their whole plan would have failed yes uh, Nagwa you've uh, mentioned a very important uh, point uh, which is uh, crossing the Suez uh, Canal uh, also and that was uh, in uh, uh, Ramadan uh, yes. Uh, yes, on the 10th of uh, Ramadan, on the 6th of October of the year 1973, and that was not uh, uh, um, uh, a minor I mean, or a small matter because the, the whole army have, uh, the Egyptian army have crossed uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Suez Canal uh, only in six hours and was able to uh, uh, be on the next uh, side of uh, the uh, canal in only six hours. It was, uh, the plan was, it was genius. Mm. It demonstrated Egyptian brilliance when it comes to tactics, when it comes uh, to following orders, being precise. It was a feat until till today. Yes. Internationally, what Egypt has done is being taught in military schools worldwide. Yes. Uh, also in politics, um, what they did in order to cross, they spent weeks ahead camouflaging their plan. No one in the army knew they were going to even fight. Yes. They knew a couple hours ahead. Yes. So the planning itself was brilliant, whether the camouflage, whether the movement of all the weapons, it was quite brilliant, and if it shows anything, that we are, we are determined people, we can achieve whatever we yes. have in mind. Yes. And I think some of these values should be instilled in our youth. 
Yes, and all the army and the commanders of the army who kept this secret, a top secret, and no one knew anything about it. Um, uh, uh, um, only uh, one hour before they crossed the, ca the Suez Canal, all the, uh, uh, the uh, military commanders uh, knew about the, the plan and they went ahead with it. Yes. 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 So... Uh, um, um, the loyalty and the faithfulness of the Egyptian youth uh, to uh, their homeland, how uh, could they express it? Uh, uh, long ago, on the, in, the, in, in the 70s, uh, uh, people were expressing uh, this by uh, uh, soldiers or um, uh, were participating in the army and defending uh, Egypt and uh, also the families, even the girls in uh, the families uh, and, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, volunteering work, helping in uh, uh, hospitals uh, and in uh, uh, curing uh, the uh, injured soldiers. But nowadays, uh, uh, how are the youth of Egypt expressing their loyalty and faithfulness to their homeland? Well, I think now it's a bit different because yeah. they're not taught the same narratives we were, like most of the grandpa era, most of our grandparents, so the parents themselves, they're trying to install the same values. They're not yes. succeeding 100% because of globalization. But on the other hand, they really love the country. They just need guys. Some of them, they try their best. Like before, women used to volunteer in hospitals, yes, absolutely. But nowadays we have NGOs and the youth and the students, they volunteer, whether it's um, to help minorities or to help orphans or to help um, in cleaning campaigns and biodiversity campaigns. Yes. So being patriotic is different on your capabilities. You don't have to pick up arms and go fight. Thank God we live in peace nowadays because of our government and our, our leaders. If push comes to shove, I believe the Egyptians will, will stand by their country like they've always done. Yes. But right now, patriotism has a different perspective. So at least that's what I believe. Yes. And yes. what I've seen from working with NGOs and working in student bodies, Egyptians, no matter their age, they really love the country. They just have different ways of showing it. Yes, uh, but you know, um, it's not, uh, nowadays, all uh, youth in Egypt uh, saying we would like to uh, participate in uh, army. Uh, so this is a very um, uh, also important and a very good picture that I. Uh, yes, uh, true. Mm. Um, if push comes to job, you'd find a lot of people wanting to volunteer in the yes. army or participate in the army. And that is not found in a lot of countries. A lot of countries, their citizens are forced to go into the army or they're paid heavily, like mercenaries. In Egypt, people do volunteer out of love. Uh, people, at least uh, during the war, you, you do realize women... Um, gave away the gold, the jewelry, artists yes. would give away the, the funds and whatever they raised through the concerts or movies to yes. help the country. Yes, I true. believe yes. if Egypt is in a dire need that her and her elders and everyone in the country will step up and help if they can. It's true. You've uh, mentioned a very important point, which is uh, the role of uh, uh, art and of uh, singers, uh, uh, artists uh, uh, during uh, the war of uh, uh, 73 and before the war started uh, for uh, the great legend, legend Omu Kalsoum, uh, like from the concerts uh, she used to several countries uh, and also uh, other uh, also uh, Hafiz and uh, all the singers said uh, their uh, country Egypt. Yes, that is true. Yes. Uh, art has a huge role. It's
motivate the people. Not only a financial, it helps motivate the people. It helps give them a correct image going on. Not only a national, but abroad as well. Like uh, Umm Kalthoum, when she traveled to France, yeah. she spoke about what was happening. Um, like an ambassador to exactly, yeah. exactly. Omar Sharif life. When they went to France, they went after the war between France and Algeria, and they were asked, and they put it in view. We support our brethren. Yes. We never visited France before the war ended. Yes. So I believe our actors. A pivotal role, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your valuable information, Ms. Nagwa Shinawi, a lawyer and member of the program. Thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, I miss a song.